In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, unto the age of all ages, Amen. I would like to speak about making good decisions. Finding a balance in our life, and being able to make sound decisions that benefit, that benefit us and benefit others uh, in our lives. The question is, how do people make their decisions? Well, some rely on gut feelings. Uh, others, they rely on facts. They collect all the facts, they analyze everything, and then they make a decision. Others rely on experience. One person may say, my experience in this matter before was such and such, therefore, I'm going to decide now that the situation is repeating itself, that I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Why is it important that you answer this question? The question, how do, you, how do people make their decisions? Actually, how do you make your decisions? No one is born with awesome decision-making skills. So it is a skill that needs to be learned and acquired and strengthened, but may not ever be perfected. This means that the more often you make decisions, the better you will get at, you'll get at it as long as you learn from your experience and value the experience of others and listen to wisdom. Having said all of this, I want to give you a formula for solid and good decision making that includes the balance that we make in order to come out with sound decisions and plans. And I'm going to do this over um, two or three videos. Every person can make good decisions by following three essential principles. Today I'll speak of one main principle and then in the next videos I will speak about the second and the third. So, But remember this, you can, you can make sound and good decisions by following three essential principles. The first one is good decision making begins by discerning the will of God. And many people ask, what is the will of God? How can I tell the will of God? How do I know that God wants me to do this and that? And, and we hear a lot of this around, uh, you know, uh, uh, students applying to universities and jobs and, uh, or moving to a certain place and so on. But remember, the first principle uh, that can help you make good decisions is this one. Good decision making begins by discerning the will of God. The second principle is that good decision making balances logic and feelings. And the third principle that is essential to good decision making is good decision making does what I call a three point check. Let's focus today on discerning the will of God. So solid decision making begins by discerning the will of God, knowing what is God's will for you. God delights in revealing his will. So contrary to some people's belief uh, that God wants to hold back his will and you have to fight for it. And it's like he has this uh, thing that he's holding behind his back. It's called his will and he's not going to reveal it to you. And you have to beg and plead and cry and keep saying and asking. No, God desires to reveal his will to you. Um, he delights in revealing his will to those who are eager to follow his precepts. I want you uh, on your own to read Psalm 33 verse 18 and Psalm 35 verse 27 and Psalm 147 11 and look at what each of them is saying about the will of God. Our attitude towards decision making should be that of Jesus himself who affirmed and I quote not my will but your will be done. He said that in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, and in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. God reveals his will to us in several ways. Let me number a few. The first one, through his Holy Spirit. That's why the children of God who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them and who are filled by the Spirit of God they tend to tell right away what the will of God is and discern it much faster than someone who does not. When the Spirit of truth comes, Jesus said, He will guide you into all the truth. 
for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare it to you. He will declare to you the things that are to come. That's in John chapter 16, verse 13, and also in the first letter of St. John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. So the first thing is, you have to be a man and woman of of prayer uh, filled with the Spirit of God because you converse and talk to God regularly. Second, God reveals His will through His Word. In uh, Psalm 119 verse 105, it is written, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's pretty, pretty much saying, David is saying that the Word of God, uh, you know, it, it sheds light into the darkness we're walking in. And it shows us the way. So it shows us God's will. It acts like a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The third thing is, through the guidance of our Father of Confession, we hear God's will. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, St. Paul says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. St. Paul is, is, is telling the Hebrews, remember the leaders that you have in the church, the presbyters, the elders, those who are, who are shepherding you and leading you. Today, that uh, such individuals, for you and I, would be our fathers of confession, or our father of confession. So God blesses those decisions that He initiates Himself. And that li lines up with, with His Word. That lines up with what he said in Proverbs 4.11. He said, I have taught you the way of wisdom. God teaches you how to discern and how to have wisdom and how to know the way and how to know his will. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. God blesses the decisions that he initiates, but he also blesses the decisions that accomplish his purpose and those decisions that depend on his strength. In Philippians chapter 2, 13, the famous verse that we all know says, It is God who works in you to will and to act. It is Him who works for, in you to will, even to have that will, and to act according to His good purpose. According to His good purpose. So God blesses the decisions He starts and He initiates in your life. He blesses the decisions that accomplish, accomplish His purpose and depend on His strength. Where St. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Philippians chapter 4. God also blesses those decisions that result in His glory. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory, the glory of God, said St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Anything that points to God's majesty and glory would attract people to God. And that's what God wants. He wants people to come to Him because He is the source of their life. He is the source of their goodness. Because He loves you, He wants you to look at His majesty and be in awe of, of how amazing He is. And then you would run after Him. And in uniting yourself and being united with Him, you will have goodness and eternal life. He also blesses decisions that reflect His character that promote justice and that promote kindness and humility. He has showed you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's Micah 6.8. I love this verse. Let's, let's say it again. He has showed you, O man, what is good. What is good? He has showed you his will. What is that good will? And what does the Lord require of you? to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The Lord also blesses those decisions that come from faith, that come because you trust Him and you make a certain decision that stems out of that trust, God will bless that decision. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. That's Hebrews 11.6. So if you're wondering, how do I make good decisions? I put before you one essential principle today. Good decision-making begins by discerning the will of God. And God's will for you 
is your prosperity and your your life, your eternal life for you. And his will is to make you successful in all that you do. But remember, you have to discern his will. In order to do that, you have to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to be in conversation with God. You have to be always in the presence of God, engaged with God. You have to understand that he guides you through his written word, through the Bible, the scriptures, and that he guides you through your father of confession who, who walks alongside you and leads you in the, in the path of God. And remember that God blesses those decisions that he initiates, those decisions that accomplish his purpose and depend on his strength. He blesses the decision that result in his glory and turning people to him so that they can have eternal life. And he blesses the decisions that reflect his character and that promote justice, kindness, and humility, and those decisions that come out of faith. May God bless you, and we'll meet again to talk about the second principle that can help you have and make good decisions. That is balancing logic and feelings. Glory be to God forever and ever.